Hey folks, and welcome back to another Division 2 video. In this one, I'm gonna go over an extremely versatile, reliable, and solid damage build, which works with literally any weapon type with only a few minor tweaks. It's been a while since I've done a build video, but I've gotten quite a few people asking about the build I was running in my Stop Hoarding Loot video. So I thought, why not? Let's jump into it. If you're new to the channel, hello and welcome. And if you enjoy this video or find it helpful, giving it a like goes a long way and consider subscribing and ringing the bell. It's free and it means you won't miss any future uploads. With that, let's get into the video. Like I said, in this one, I'm gonna go over one of the greatest all round damage builds that I like to run with an assault rifle, but will work with a range of different weapon types with only a few tweaks to your specialization. Now, this isn't anything groundbreaking, but it is a highly used, trusted, and extremely versatile build with a few of my own tweaks and changes. And when I say highly used, you will probably find this setup of gear and brands to be the base and foundation of a large range of different damage builds, which means it's a build you can take, customize, play around with, and really make your own. In this video, I will go over the full build, including each piece of gear, weapon, talent, and how it all goes together. I'll also give you a few alternative pieces for the build because I always like to offer a flexible guide. After all, we all play the game differently and you might be inspired to try something a little bit different. First, as a quick disclaimer, my watch level is over 1000, which means all of the attributes on my watch are maxed out, giving me an extra 10% weapon damage, 20% headshot damage, 10% critical hit chance, and 20% critical hit damage. This is worth keeping in mind as I go over the attributes of the build. If you don't come to the same values of me by the end of the video, this is more than likely why. So let's start with the gear, attributes, and talents. For the mask, I'm using a Providence mask, which gives us the one piece brand bonus of 15% headshot damage, weapon damage on the core attribute, crit hit chance and damage in the minor attributes, and for the mod, I also have another crit hit damage. On the chest, I'm using the named Providence chest piece, the Sacrifice, which with the mask gives us the two piece brand bonus of 10% crit hit chance. For the attributes, I have weapon damage for the core, crit hit chance and crit hit damage on the minor with another crit hit damage mod in the mod slot. And for the talent, with this being a named gear piece, we have the perfect version of glass cannon, perfect glass cannon. All damage you deal is amplified by 30%. All damage you take is amplified by 60%. It goes without saying, but this is a high risk, high reward talent doing massive damage, but at the same time increasing the damage you take, which means you'll have to be more aware of what's going on around you because it only takes one sneaky outcast rusher and you're gonna have a bad time. If you don't have the named chess piece, the sacrifice, you can farm this anywhere in the light zone. So you can head to any mission or control points that are currently targeted loot on chess pieces or the Providence brand. You could also just use a normal Providence chess piece with the standard version of glass cannon while you're farming for the named version. You will lose 5% damage, but you will also take 10% less damage. So there's a trade off there. If you don't like glass cannon, as I know a lot of players don't, with this build having a huge amount of crit chance, you can swap out glass cannon for obliterate. Critical hits increase total weapon damage by 1% for 5 seconds, stacks up to 25 times. Obliterate is a great damage talent, but you will be doing less damage than Glass Cannon, plus Obliterate builds damage over time, unlike Glass Cannon, which gives you instant damage the moment you pull the trigger. So you are also losing some burst or instant damage. But even though you're doing less damage, you're going to increase your survivability with Obliterate because you won't be taking that extra 60% damage. Personally, I always go for Glass Cannon. I just really enjoy this talent, but I thought I'd mention it for those of you who want that extra survivability. For the holster, I have a Cheska holster, which gives us the one piece brand bonus of 10% crit hit chance. Weapon damage on the core attribute and crit hit chance and damage for the minor attributes. If you're ever putting together a damage build, one piece of Cheska with critical hit chance on a minor attribute is one of the largest crit hit chance increases you can gain from a single piece of gear, with a good roll giving you up to 16% off that one piece of gear. For the backpack, we have a piece of gear I use on pretty much all of my damage builds, and that is the named Providence backpack, The Gift. Using a Providence backpack combined with the mask and chest mean we get the third brand bonus of 15% crit hit damage. 
For the attributes, there is weapon damage as the core attribute, crit hit chance, and crit hit damage on the miner, with a critical hit damage mod in the mod slot. The gift comes with the talent Perfect Vigilance. Increase total weapon damage by 25%. Taking damage disables this buff for 3 seconds. If you don't have the gift backpack, unfortunately the only way to get the gift is by extracting it from the dark zone, conflict caches, or the only non-PVP way to get one is from the named cache, which you can get from season events or the summit. But a normal Providence backpack with the standard version of Vigilance is just as strong in this case, the only difference being the time the buff is down after taking damage. With Perfect Vigilance, the buff goes down for 3 seconds, but with Standard Vigilance, it goes down for 4. That's only a difference of 1 second more without the buff, so it's not really a huge deal. Going for the Gift Backpack is really more of a step towards min-maxing the build. For the gloves, I have a pair of Grupo gloves with weapon damage on the core attribute and, you guessed it, crit hit chance and damage on the miner. This is just to get that extra crit damage, with us getting the 15% from the One Piece Grupo brand bonus, combined with the crit hit damage from the miner attribute, and that's a total 27% crit hit damage just from the gloves. Also, at this point in the build, we will now be perfectly at the cap of 60% crit hit chance with the 6% from the Mask, Chest, Holster, Backpack and Gloves, 10% from the One Piece Cheska, 10% from the Two Piece Providence, and 10% from my SHD Watch. On the knees, I'm using the old favourite, the named Overlord knee pads, the Fox's Prayer, with weapon damage on the core attribute and crit hit damage on the free minor attribute. And of course, with this being a named piece of gear, we have a unique attribute on the third, which, on the Fox's Prayer, is damage to targets out of cover, which, in case you didn't know, is one of the better attributes to increase your overall DPS, or damage per second. This is because damage to targets out of cover is a multiplicative damage type, which, most of the time, nets a larger increase than additive damage. This is a pretty big topic, so instead of going over how damage works and is calculated in the Division 2 here, I'll link my video in the top right and in the description, where I go over all of the math in a simple and easy to understand way, so make sure to check it out after this video. You may learn how to increase your damage next time you're throwing a build together. Let's move on to weapons. So I primarily use this build as an AR or Assault Rifle build, which means for the primary weapon I've gone for my trusty Police M4. Being an Assault Rifle, it comes with the first two attributes fixed as Assault Rifle Damage and Damage to Health. And for the third attribute, I have that role to damage to targets out of cover. For the talent, I've gone with Ranger. Amplifies weapon damage by 2% for every 5 meters you are away from your target. There are plenty of great talents for assault rifles, but I've always been a big fan of Ranger for a few reasons. Firstly, it's a burst damage talent, which means unlike talents like Strained, you get all of the damage the moment you start firing, and you don't have to wait for any kind of wind-up before you're fully taking advantage of the talent. And secondly, with an assault rifle build, I always prefer to play mid to long range, where Ranger really shines. Mainly because in the Division 2, if you get up close, the AI isn't actually too bad. It will try and flank you, cover fire, rush, and close the gap. But, from a distance, the AI is as dumb as a bag of rocks, which makes them easier to pick off and gives you a big advantage. Where assault rifles really shine is when you come up against an enemy without any armor, like the Black Tusk War Dogs, or what I call the Murder Wallies. This is because the whole weapon starts to stack multiplicative damage. Against a normal armoured target, we have damage to targets out of cover, along with Ranger, which is amplified damage, another form of multiplicative damage. But as long as you're firing at an enemy that just has a health bar, let's say a Black Tusk War Dog at about 20 meters, we have three different multiplicative damage types all stacking. The 10% damage to targets out of cover, 8% amplified damage from Ranger at 20 meters, and a huge 21% damage to health from the fixed second attribute on the assault rifle. For mods on the Police M4, I have 5% crit damage on the scope, 5% crit damage on the muzzle, 5% crit damage on the underbarrel, and the extended mag that gives us 20 extra rounds at the cost of minus 10% reload speed. 
For the secondary weapon, this comes down to taste. You can pretty much swap this out for whatever your preferred secondary is, but I wanted to try something a little bit different. I feel like every build I've used in the last few months has had at least one version of the classic M1A, and I really feel like a change. So for this one, I've gone with a shotgun, a weapon type I don't tend to use a lot, which is exactly why I went for it. So I'm using a Marine Super 90 shotgun, which comes with shotgun damage and damage to armor as fixed attributes. And just like with the M4, I have damage to targets out of cover as the third attribute. There are other shotguns you could use here, but I've gone with the Super 90 with the RPM or rounds per minute, reload speed and damage being quite balanced. And for a huge burst of damage for the talent, I've gone with in sync. Hitting an enemy grants 15% skill damage for five seconds. Using a skill or damaging an enemy with a skill grants 15% weapon damage for 5 seconds. Damage increases are doubled while both buffs are active at the same time. And that last part of the talent there is where we're going to get that big damage increase combined with the Crusader Shield. If you don't already know how this works, deploying the Crusader Shield counts for the second part of the talent using a skill. Then your first shot counts as the first part of the talent. So then you've got an extra 30% damage for five seconds, which with a shotgun up close is often all you need. Then you can reproc in sync by simply putting away the shield, then redeploying it. Easy and powerful. And for the mods on the shotgun, I have reload speed on the magazine and then crit hit damage on the rest. For the pistol, I pretty much always run the orbit named revolver on a damage build for the situational but strong crit buff that comes with perfect finisher. Swapping from this weapon within 10 seconds of killing an enemy grants 35% crit hit chance and 40% crit hit damage for 15 seconds. Like with the gift backpack, the orbit pistol is a dark zone exclusive, but a 1911 with the normal version of finisher is a great alternative while you're trying to get an orbit of your own. Using perfect finisher or finisher is just a nice but situational little damage buff. If you ever get an enemy on low health, switch to the pistol, get the killing shot, then you have a huge crit chance and damage buff. With this build, the crit hit chance does go to waste with us already being at the hard cap of 60%, but the extra crit hit damage takes this build's crit damage well over 200% at either 238% or 233, depending on if you're using the perfect or standard version of the talent. Putting all of this together gives us base attributes from the gear at exactly 60% crit hit chance, 198% crit hit damage without finisher, and up to 238% with perfect finisher, 90% headshot damage, and 100% bonus weapon damage. For the skills on this build, I'm running a pretty default combination of the Crusader Shield and the Revive Hive. Because I play this build at a mid to long range, the shield's main job is to help buff the shotgun when up close. This gives you a small amount more survivability and keeps Vigilance active on the backpack. And the Revive Hive is more of a just in case because you can never be too careful when you're running glass cannon solo. But really, you can switch this out to any skill of your choice depending on how you like to play. One skill I do swap this out for quite often is the Banshee Pulse, which helps daze and confuse enemies while we're trying to move in. Whenever I put a build together around an assault rifle, my go-to specialization is always the gunner spec. This gives us 10% armor on kill, which can come in really handy with glass cannon, 5% increased rate of fire for five seconds after a kill, 10% weapon handling while you're not moving, and an extra 50% reload speed every third reload. And of course, for the weapon damage, I have these rolled into assault rifle, shotgun, and pistol. But if you're using a different weapon type, make sure to adjust these depending on what you're using. Now, like I've said a few times, when it comes to playing this build, I like to stay at that mid to long range, primarily using the police M4, taking advantage of the accuracy of the M4, buffing the range of talent with the distance, and keeping a little more out of harm's way to avoid taking extra damage from glass cannon and losing the damage from vigilance. If anything gets too close, or if I feel like getting more into the thick of it, I get the super 90, use the shield, and proc in sync for a huge amount of burst damage, and enjoy the chaos. It is really satisfying to take out a bunch of NPCs with the M4, then mop up the strays with the Super 90. Great fun, really enjoy this build. 
And that is everything for this video. I hope you found something in this one that will help you out or give you a few ideas when making a build of your own. And like I said, this is a fantastic base for any damage build. So don't be afraid to take it, tweak it, customize it, really make it your own. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to give it a like, comment, subscribe, and ring the little bell. It's completely free and means you won't miss any future uploads. Thanks for watching and I will catch you in the next one.